Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at how to make 3D construction models using Vectorworks. I'm also going to be answering some of the really tricky questions about how you can use uh, walls where you've got two different types of wall like a plinth wall and a different layer above and show you how that works in reality. So we're going to start from completely from scratch and all I've done is copy in a couple of resources from one of my other projects so that I immediately get to start with those wall types that I've built. I'll show you how to build those in another video in the future, so make sure you subscribe if you're new around here. Okay, so we've got our first little bit of wall in. I'm just going to duplicate that other wall and basically replace that with a different wall type. So if you can see what I've got here, I've actually, instead of one wall type, I've actually got two different wall types. Let me just go back and select the uh, correct wall type to replace with. So here's one of my eco home projects from a few years ago. Let's just paste in that wall type and a very simple way, just eye drop. Okay, fantastic. So let's snap that wall so it's exactly the same build up at the back there. And basically I'm going to make that say two meters high. Now I want to copy across a couple of items that I've already done from this project to save a bit of time on this tutorial for you. So I'm just copying and pasting. And as you can see, when I drag in the doors, the real problem is um, you do not see the wall cutting through the lower plinth. So a really good way around this is just to duplicate the door and instead of using another door, create an opening. And that opening goes into the, essentially the ground floor plinth section of the wall. So you can see this is a really neat solution to create a wall that looks like two different wall types, or should we say a wall type with a plinth at the bottom. And this is a question that I often get asked in my tutorials. So I think this is a really kind of clear explanation for you. I also wanted to play around with the wrapping as well, just to kind of get that last component wrapping in. Um, so this is possible in the wall style itself. Basically going to the wrapping, you can see there's lots of options in there to actually wrap to different types of the inserts and things like the cores and also the elements of the wall as well. But basically this allows you to do things like wall returns on those kind of reveals. So after a bit of fiddling around, um, those are looking a lot better. The other thing I wanted to do is just reduce the uh, sort of thickness and position of that door. So let's just edit this wall type, first of all. So here I'm just going to reduce the amount of insulation in the wall. So you can see that stone's gone back a little bit there. And basically, if I kind of look at that, I'm pretty happy with the way this works. Now I need a little stone plinth along the top of the wall. So to do this, I'll do a bit of freeform modeling. I'm basically just going to extract a couple of the edges and now I'm basically going to go into my profile and draw essentially a sill. So rather than trying to create this using the wall itself, I'm just going to go through and modify using a rectangle. Um, let's just kind of bring that through. I'll kind of use the reshape tool, so double click, just reshape it down a bit, and the clip tool just to do a little cutout for the drip there. So you can see that I'm easily able to essentially select if I want to with using the J key, that kind of extracted surface, and then, you know, with a click, I can extrude along my profile to create a very nice looking sill. Now, the final little step here is just to find a nice texture, um, some stone or something like that, that I can use to make like a nice stone sill there. Okay, so it's looking pretty good for now. Um, let's take that object and convert it to an auto hybrid. And we'll just raise the cut plane elevation of that auto hybrid, just so it looks like a tr traditional 2D object when you look down in top plan. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's go through and show the doors open, sort of 85%, something like that. And I really like that aspect in Vectorworks. This is a fun thing to do, and clients really like it when you show those doors open and you know how you can walk in and out and through the building. Okay, so I'm fairly happy so far. Um, what I'm now gonna do is moving on to a really nice tool to start on the roof section. So for this, I'm just gonna put a wall plate in on top of the roof. You can see I'm using a framing member. Um, and this framing member can deal with all sorts of timbers and things like steels as well. So I'm just doing a quick resize on that. Could also be used for things like copings as well as, you know, things like the top of that wall there. So what this does, um, it gives me the ability to resize the framing member, basically make a really nice little kind of like element to the top of the wall so that I can actually get the roof members to sit on top of that. Okay, so I'm just playing around with the classes there. I'm also going to kind of have a little bit of metal overhang. Let's duplicate that framing member so I've got more of a timber section at the back there. Okay, so I'll just make one more class. I'll just apply a nice little oak material there and let's just snap that into the corner. 
Okay, very good. Okay, so now let's move on to the roof section of the tutorial. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make, say, a four meter framing member for my roof. I'm physically gonna move it up to the right location. And a bit later, I might actually create a layer for this. Going to change things like the reference. So it's probably just got um, a slightly different reference there. And I'm gonna put a couple of notches in and give the beam a little bit of an overhang. So you can see the notch at the top of the ridge there formed very easily. And there is the beginnings of a little notch um, also. So let's just change that bearing inset and that will increase the notch there. Just so we can kind of bear the beam on top of our timber member there. Actually, we didn't really need that bit of metal flashing um, on top of that wall, but it was good to show you that anyway. Okay, fantastic. So let's kind of clear out the beam and I think you'll agree that makes a very nice rafter. Let's go and duplicate this, say 600 centers. So using the, uh, just dragging off in control D and then we can of course mirror those across. So very, very rapidly, I've created a quick roof there. Let's now duplicate uh, my framing member that I used there. Let's just increase the depth a bit. So we'll go to uh, the depth and the width. Let's just fiddle with those. So we'll go 300 deep and let's say 50 wide, maybe a bit more, 100 wide. And we'll just slot that into there to support the beam. Excellent. So these kind of framing members are very flexible. Um, the really great thing is um, I really like showing the width with the center line so you see them in plan, but you can also see how effective they are in 3D as well. Okay, so next up, I'm going to start creating my roof in a second. Let's just give those beams a little bit of an overhang. Okay, so I'm just going to use a plane for this. I'm going to go and create a roof face. And to begin with, I'm just going to create a fairly generic one with the correct angle. And I'm going to basically select one that I've already created in my JRA roof pack. And then I can immediately drag my roof up, snap it into position. Okay, we've obviously got those uh, framing members in there as well. You see a bit of Z fighting where they are. So what I might do there is just kind of make my roof um, a little bit slimmer. I could delete the framing members, but I think I'll keep those. And I think I've decided what I'll do is I'll just move them out. And basically, actually, you know what? The easiest thing to do here is just move those in. Just move the roof in a bit using the reshape tool, just so we can reveal the framing member nicely. That looks a lot better on the outside. Okay, great. So the next step is I want to basically create a nice face here. Um, so I'm gonna use the extract surface tool. Make sure you're extracting using planar objects when you do this. And essentially you can see I've already extracted the surface at the right location, just a bit of stretching there. And I can now extrude that 25 mil. What I'll do is I'll just put some nice material on that. So let's put that into the window frame class just so it matches the same color as the window. Okay, great. So now we're onto the uh, kind of gutter. Let's go and put a sort of 125 mil circle in there. I'm gonna use my clip tool to clip. And basically let's just also do one other little trick, which is go to the roof. And what I want to do is just go to the roof style. So edit style, not the components. And here I can just make the zinc pipe 50 mil. So you just see that nice little bit of zinc hanging out over the roof there, which is how it would be. Okay, so let's extrude our basically profile for the gutter. I really wish there was a gutter tool in Vectorworks. Um, it needs to be something that we add rather than custom modeling. You know, every roof, every project will always have some rainwater pipes and gutters. So I hope to see this in Vectorworks in the future. Okay, so there we go. We've got a nice little gutter there. Um, we need some downpipes. Now, here's another thing that I often get asked. How do we model, you know, roof accessories, gutters, fascias, downpipes, that kind of thing. So the best way to do this is actually kind of like uh, use a custom bit of modeling extruding along a path. Okay, so I'm just gonna save my progress so far. I'm gonna get my polyline tool, number eight. And essentially I'm just gonna kind of draw in the profile of my kind of swan neck gutter, just in 2D. Now it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but I can just kind of reshape this as required. And let's give this a go. So now I'm just going to click six and draw a little circle for my rainwater pipe. And of course, extrude along a path will enable me to immediately extrude that gutter or rainwater pipe along the path. Let's match up the uh, kind of color there with the texture. Um, also, let's just move that up a little bit three dimensionally. And a little trick here, let's just kind of move that into the zone between the window and the end of the wall there. Um, I'll also just want to remove that little section there. So good little tip, double click into my gutter, copy the shape out and paste in place, and then use it to actually subtract this time from the uh, swan neck rainwater pipe. So it's pretty perfect. Um, I also want to make some adjustments. So double clicking on the rainwater pipe 
allows me to actually modify the path. So that's really nice. Now I could put some curves in there if I wanted to, but I'm pretty happy for now. The final little tweak is just to go through and create that as an auto hybrid as well. And then of course, mirror it around that center. And I think you'll agree, you know, those extra little bits of roof detail, the gutter, the fascia, and the rainwater pipes uh, make a big difference. Okay, so I'm now gonna basically go to the point where all of this is in its own roof layer. Just gonna select all of that and assign it to the roof layer. We'll do the same um, with the kind of rainwater goods as well. So let's just select all of those and push them using assign to selection into the roof layer. And finally, we'll remove that piece that we didn't need. Okay, great. So now I can really see what I'm doing. The roof is in its own layer. I can turn that on and off nice and easily. I've got a couple of bits to fix up inside. Uh, as you can see, I just need to basically do a little top offset there on that wall and basically just remember to get the inside face, not the outside face like I did before. There we go. And let's just move by minus 12 or whatever the thickness of our plasterboard was at that kind of piece of, should we say, wall plate in a little bit. Okay, so I think you'll agree the model's coming together quite rapidly. Um, let's basically go for a bit of a floor now. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to use a shape and just create objects from shapes. Love this command, just to essentially create a floor slab. Okay, so here's a really, really nice little tip. I'm going to go to replace, basically go to my slabs pack that I've developed that I sell on the website. Do check these out if you want to save some time and have a good starting point for your own models, basically. Um, so you can see I've got a really nice slab with that nice build up. All I need to do is change the datum of that slab so the top surface is that section there. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the foundations and the footings. So I'm basically going to copy that wall type. I'm actually going to set up a layer that is minus one meter below ground. Paste in place and let's just drop that down that wall type. Okay, that's fantastic. Now I'm going to go to my wall pack. So over in my resources, my favorites is basically my JRA walls pack. So this is a really great resource. Um, it saves so much time for me and my clients. Um, it's something that's available for you to pick up on the website. Do check it out. Basically, I can just copy through those wall types that I've created before, paste them into the drawing. Let's align and distribute them to neaten them up a little bit. And basically, let's just put them over there. Okay, so now I can just eye drop very, very quickly the wall type. Just make sure that you use the uh, right side to replace. So it's the inside face as well. And finally, let's go down, duplicate that foundation mode, and we'll go down a bit lower. We'll do uh, minus 2, 1250 and 250. So what we'll do is we'll just simply um, turn on the other bit of wall there and basically paste in. And then we can essentially use the replacement. Now, do remember to check the offsets. That's the downside with doing the duplication. Put it on the right layer, but we ought to adjust those offsets. And you can see now I've got a very nice little concrete footing there for the wall. The below ground wall. Excellent. So it's really come on. Uh, we've got the foundations, we've got the footings, we've got our kind of plinth wall, we've got the wall above, and we've also got things like that. It's a nice sill. Now I'm not totally happy with the colour of the sill. It doesn't really match in with the palette of materials that I wanted. So I just want to show you this lovely little tip about matching things like texture colours and things like this. Using image effects in Vectorworks is a very, very quick way without having to go off to Photoshop or you know anything else just to tweak the color of those textures as well. So I also just want to add in an additional component for the floor here. So let's create a little wood floor section here. Uh, just remember you can right click and correct spellings and things like that in Apple as well. Let's go through and this time I'm actually going to use a material for the very first time. Um, materials are a little bit more advanced than textures. I'll be covering those in future videos. Materials are amazing in that you can use things like quantification, but they have physical properties as well as graphical properties as well. Okay, so one final little tweak here I just want to make is putting some sills on. Let me just have a sip of tea. Okay, so you can see I've put a little sill on that door now, it looks a bit more realistic. I think what we need now is some ground. So let's go through and just kind of draw in a bit of a soapy ground in section there. Just going to snap it onto there using the G key just to kind of get that base down there. And let's kind of completely close it using the close command in object info. Okay, so I'm going to use my push pull tool, which I like to use in this sort of 3D scenario there. Let's go through and select a soil material. I'm also going to basically go to the texture tool, just search for some grass and essentially apply grass straight to that surface. 
So without having to create another surface at this stage, which I might do later. Okay, so we'll scale that soil up. That's looking really good for the ground. So I've decided I do want to extract the grass as a separate surface. So by using the extract tool, this does mean that I can actually give it a thickness, essentially applying the grass directly to that new surface. That actually looks a bit like nicer. And also let's move the whole thing down a little bit there as well. Um, if I do want to, I can also just drop down the bottom of my wall, just so it kind of meets that extra bit of uh, ground level there. So I'm just going to do that using a bottom offset on that particular component. And basically do make sure you edit the style of the wall to do that if you're using a wall style there. Okay, fantastic. So do make sure you replace the heights. Uh, one downside of replacing the height though, you can see that I've actually dropped the top of the wall has also gone up. So just drop that down with a top offset value there. Okay, just doing a little bit of uh, kind of adjustment on the sill there. And I think this is looking quite nice. So let's just put a little path in using the a rectangle tool, drawing on that automatic face. And of course, let's just extrude, say, 100 mil. I'm going to subtract it from the grass just so we've got a little zone where the uh, kind of like path fits in there, if you like, just by using a solid subtraction. And once again, I can apply a nice new material to this object. So, you know, while the texture tool is really, really good, if you do want to actually have a separate object with a different thickness, using things like extract, add and clip surface or solid subtractions is the way to go. OK, so just catching up with a bit of editing there as well. OK, fantastic. So um, I'll just stretch that out a tiny bit more. Lovely. I'm going to rearrange my layers and just sort of drag the order of those around as if you were building the building for real. OK, so it's looking really, really good. Um, there's a couple of little things I want to do on the inside. Just want to extract some surfaces here and basically add them together and then extrude them. Um, I noticed there was a very slight discrepancy with the plasterboard. Uh, so just to get those lined up and now watch happen when I actually extract those surfaces, basically extracting them. Now I can immediately just add them together as a clean surface and of course extrude them. Now this is one of the lovely things with Vectorix. Um, for an interior designer or an architect who likes to use colour, you know, Vectorix has, in my view, the best colour handling of any software. So using this nice Farron Ball colour palette, I can essentially match exactly the colours that were intended by Farron Ball, just to kind of like really show the clients some design and colour options, which I think you'll agree is a wonderful benefit. Okay, so we're going to go through and search for a word called profile now. I want to show you how to model things like skirtings and covings. So I found a nice little bit of kind of skirting profile. I'm just going to drag that into the drawing. And you see they often come in quite small. So let's give it a bit of fill. Second thing I'm going to do is scale it up a bit larger to get it to the right size. And then I'm going to basically extrude it. So let's just put it into the right view and rotate it. Let's put it into the front view and rotate again. And finally, I'll just mirror it to get it in the right view there. OK, so now I'm going to essentially extrude along the wall. Um, just make sure that you stretch it all the way along. And let's basically turn off the roof while we do this, just so we can see what we're doing a bit more. So there's my skirting there. Just drop that down. And let's extrude it all the way along the path where it needs to be. Now, at the moment, of course, it's going um, right through the doors. Don't worry, we'll sort this out in a second. Let's just give that a nice material. And a very easy thing to do is just basically put in a shape, extrude that shape, and essentially use it to subtract solids on basically the skirting there. I just make sure that these are on the same level or layer rather, just so that they can actually be subtracted from one another. So very, very easy way to create a nice little bit of detail for that skirting. I think you'll agree. Okay, so very good. I'm going to open those doors once again. I'm very, very happy with my model. Um, and all I really want to do now is basically show you how we can do the second phase, which is essentially do some documentation. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon. So just before we carry on looking at the amazing new features in Vector is 2025, I just wanted to reach out to you and offer my teaching and training services that I offer all over the world via Zoom. I'm an experienced architect with over 20 years experience, but I've been a Vectorwitz user my entire career and I really love teaching people from small practices to individuals, whatever level you currently are. I can help you on 2D, 3D, BIM or various visualisation workflows. I also really love teaching Vectorwitz in combination with things like Twinmotion, Enscape and D5 Render for 3D visualisation. So wherever you are in the world, if you'd like to reach out and improve your Vectorwitz skills, please book a call or drop me an email and I'll be very, very pleased to help.